welcome everyone to episode 74 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with India Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thank you for checking us out. If you like what we're doing here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep bringing you more videos about arcades, indie devs, indie games, and everything in that area. Um, so this week we're going to be talking to Travis. He's an indie dev that I've been talking to for a couple months now um, via TikTok mostly. That's where I found him. Um, he gives tons of advice to new developers on TikTok, whether it be how to develop a character, how to do backstory, uh, good ways to add an environment so that you don't take away too much. Um, and if you're looking for his information, you can find him on TikTok at the Indie Dev. Um, and I guess without further ado, welcome, Travis. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to get on here. Um, I know we've been chatting for a little while and you've been putting out some good content, kind of helping people get into the indie scene and developing, which is kind of exactly what we're trying to do here is just spread the word about development and kind of give people a, an on-ramp into it. Yeah, no, thanks. I appreciate that. You guys are actually been kind of like a really big model that I've been trying to go after because I've seen how you try to connect with the community and like educate people. So I've been trying to follow that kind of like same mindset, but just in a different direction. Yeah, I appreciate that. And you're giving way more, it seems like way more in depth focus on the games, like how to do like this specific aspect of game development. And we're kind of just the overarching tell everybody's story kind of thing. But as we jump into this, I just want you to introduce yourself. So tell people a little bit about you, what you're working on, as well as some of your earliest video game memories. Oh, man. Um, okay, so basically, my name is Travis. I'm the indie developer, um, the indie dev. <laughs> but um, pretty much the two projects that I'm mainly working on right now is a psychological horror called 21 Floors, which basically revolves around a father and his daughter. And the father is an alcoholic. And due to certain circumstances, uh, he loses his daughter um, because of his actions. And so he has to constantly uh, relive through that memory over and over until he can fix his sin. The second game that I'm currently working on is my personal project, and that's called Down Below, which that is more of a um, like an action horror slash like narrative horror where you are a scientist in a research station in Antarctica and you're collecting samples. But due to a recent snowstorm, you have to return back to your research station. But you realize that once you do so, everything is not exactly the way that it seemed. So that's kind of like the second one there. Um as for the most like fond video game memory, that's a hard one. I I've been a huge fan of video games for all my life. And I think probably the most prominent one was when my mom actually got the Sega Genesis <laughs> and I am, um, I snuck into the Christmas presents a little too early <laughs> and I busted it out and started playing it. And um, it was actually Hotel Transylvania was the first one that I was playing. Um, and then not Hotel Transylvania, Castlevania. And the other one was Zombie Ate My Neighbors. And I was playing that. And instead of my mom actually coming out and grounding me, she was actually starting to play with me. So that was a really cool like introduction into the whole like video game scene itself. Gotcha. That's a, that's a good place to start. And those are some, classics for that system for sure oh, yeah. um i guess the next thing that i was curious about is it's always kind of cool to see how people get into this area like whether you're owning an arcade or you're making an indie game or whatever it may be how did you get into game development like what was that spark that was like here i'm gonna do this i want to try this out as uh, cheesy and cliche as it sounds, I actually got in uh, through Roblox, <laughs> and I um I started making a couple mini games there where uh, they were just kind of like some spooky horrors, like you're being chased by an AI, and I started to really realize that this is um this is a lot more fulfilling than just like writing stories, which that's kind of what my side hobby was at that time. And so once I started like experiencing, hey, other people are enjoying it, they're um, getting to see what I want them to see and like they're experiencing feelings, how I want them to feel. It kind of sparked this feeling in me where I can take people from a realm of like modern society, you're always on the go, you're always on the run and able to take them in a place where 
they can relax or, you know, have a little bit of thrill and a little bit of excitement or fear. And so it's kind of like a gatekeeper in a sense. And so that's kind of been like a wake up call and like my mission, I guess, <laughs> so to say. Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. If you're already interested in telling stories and kind of creating that narrative, it's cool to create a narrative that's immersive where they can actually feel like they're in control and connect with the character individually. Yeah. Um, so like you said, you're working on two projects right now. Um, let's talk about one of them, but the first one, I guess, uh, 21 Floors. So the story is super dark. I know you told me a little bit more in depth than you said already to the listeners, but tell the listeners a little bit more, Travis, about like what this story is about and what you're trying to do with this game. Okay, so um, the best way I can kind of explain it is there's an overall theme and message of like um, you... I guess the best way I can explain it is like, even though you can make mistakes, there's never a, an opportunity to never change. Like you can always change no matter the situation. And then um, it's also supposed to make you think about um, alcoholism and the effects that not only that it has on you, um, but other people as well, which kind of goes more uh, into depth when you play in the story by, um, by seeing like how it impacted your daughter's spirit and so to say and so uh, because of your consequences and getting into a wreck and having your uh, daughter get killed you have to live through that sin and so you repeat the same constant um experiences and effects but everything is constantly changing almost kind of like amnesia the dark descent type deal and so you're experiencing it through different points of views and different aspects. And it's kind of hard to explain that. But once you start playing, uh, it's going to make a lot more sense. So. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, I know when you told me it's all about how they're driving around and his daughter ends up dying. And I was just like, wow, that is like such a pure thing. I mean, it's, it's something that people experience, you know, and, and, it is a really, really deep thing to actually discuss through a video game. It's, it's a way that we can discuss social problems without where you can like work your way through it. In the exactly. Story. Exactly. And so by um, talking about like alcoholism as like an actual like legit issue, we can put it in an environment where it's like easy to talk about because it's not you in that particular situation. You're playing through the other person's feelings and perspectives. And so, um, for instance, like by having like the child sadly pass away and you have to deal with um, why he was an alcoholic, you can understand in the social society that like people with alcoholism are not necessarily bad people. They just might have. Uh, underlying issues that got them to that point. So may it be that they have their own um, addiction issues, uh, PTSD from war, whatever that may be, we can kind of cover that subject in a more like deeper light. So, Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I mean, it seems like you like the story driven um, kind of, I guess you could say horror games, definitely. Um, which leads into kind of like your next project, which is called Down Below, which is based, like you said, in Antarctica. It's a horror survival. Um, what's your plan with that? What is that going to become? What What are you working towards with that game? Okay, so with Down Below, it's kind of like the same concept where I like to bring societal issues to light in a comfortable manner that anyone can talk about it. And so um, with the research station, I'm trying to talk about the impact of climate and the interaction with things that we don't know and the consequences that come from it. So, like, if you're drilling a well and, like, you're, you know, digging for oil or you're getting, like, really deep core samples, how is that affecting the environment, the ecosystems that are in place? And you might awaken something that you don't want to awaken. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have gameplay up right now so people can see it what what is like what's your vision with this area like i know you're you're um developing an unreal so you're going for more of like a realistic vibe what are some things that you've come into contact with while developing this game that you saw as challenges but the final product came out and you were super excited about the way it looked i would have to say 
probably the cutscenes. I am more of like the storyboard person, the like producer role. And so trying to figure out how to get that visual representation, like a movie into a game setting was very hard because I had to learn that from scratch. I had to go to YouTube, look up at sequencer, look at um, blender animations, Maya, all those different things and try and like stick them together in different places where it didn't necessarily fit. And so by doing that, I managed to get something out of it, which is actually like a lot better than what I was expecting. Um, a prime example of that is the intro video for 21 Floors, which I sent over to you. And basically in this, like you can see that it's really rugged and the hand animations were still difficult, which I'm working on. But I was able to actually bring to light through movement and interaction rather than just simple gameplay. Yeah, I mean, you brought up a good point there that I know we we were discussing before we recorded. And that is, if you want to do this, for anybody that's aspiring to get into game development, whether it be the art side, the game development, the coding, the storyboarding, any of it, you can learn it from YouTube. Like, there are people that will give you tutorials. And you can do any of this stuff that you want. So if you're interested, don't be afraid to try it. Definitely get on there and look stuff up. But what was it? I know there's, like, this debate and you've mentioned it a little bit in some of your TikToks, the difference between Unity and Unreal. Where do you stand, <laughs> and why is that the direction you decided to go yourself? Okay, so I personally am a huge fan of Unreal because of the community aspect to it. There's always something um, to be done, and so if you need help doing that, there's always someone there to help you. If you don't know how to do it, they'll help you. If you are looking to work with someone they um, are a lot more accepting not that unity necessarily is but it's more of like a quiet community if you look down youtube and you're like hey unreal tutorials compared to unity tutorials you're not really going to find that so you're going to have to be more focused and specific but ultimately in the end personally i just do that because i like to engage and get everybody's opinions but you're a developer no matter what you pick. Is If it's Roblox, uh, Fortnite, like if you're making a game inside that, um, Unity, Unreal, RPG Maker, in the end, it doesn't matter. If you enjoy it and you're actually putting your own story, your soul into it, that's what makes you a game developer. I like that. Everybody can do it no matter big or small. You can do it and you can do it with whatever software you want to do it with. Oh, exactly. um, I guess when you started game development, what were some of the mistakes that you were making very early on that you would advise listeners to avoid or tips to avoid those mistakes? I guess um, there's a difference in controlling your balance. So th that sounds like really cliche, but have the motivation, um, like let that be your inspiration. Like, yeah, I want to do this, go for it. But you also got to know how to balance it because that can lead to um, overconfidence in certain areas. So let's say when you first begin, instead of starting small, you're like, yeah, I got this. You know, I'm going to be inspiring. I'm going to make an MMO RPG, 500 people in a lobby. You're setting such a high standard for yourself where the moment that you encounter a single challenge, which you're going to it's going to completely demoralize you. And that was kind of one of my issues I had to face with a reality check. I wanted to make a, um, a comedy shooter with like Call of Duty graphics and everything else. And I, I just, I couldn't get the base understanding of game development at that time. And so it completely knocked me on my butt. And I went through a stage where I actually stepped away from game development and didn't want to come back. But once you thought about it, or I thought about it, it was not fair, not necessarily for me, but for the other people, like they deserve to experience those stories. And so I started with something smaller. Uh, I made like a word search game uh, for <laughs> the Google Play Store. I played around a um, little bit more with Roblox, and then I transitioned to RPG Maker. And so by starting small, that's the best way to really get an introduction 
to what it is that you want in game development. So start small. Don't go big right off the bat. Yeah, that's good advice. We've heard from a lot of developers on this show is you got to start with that small goal, get it done, finish the project and learn from it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be a great polished product. You just need to start something and finish something and oh, yeah. figure out some of the speed bumps in the middle and then you can fix them next time. Or you can come back later when you're a little bit better at it and polish them. It's very easy to do. Um, I know you give tons of tips on game development on TikTok and you kind of cover a little bit of everything, whether it be like storyboarding, how to do graphics, cutscenes, a, a whole bunch of different stuff. What is your favorite part of the game development process? Man, what is up with all these tough questions? Um, <laughs> I can't make it easy on you. I would have to say the story because it is a reflection of yourself and like who you are. So I like to be an active member in the community. And so I like to have stories that focus on uh, significant impacts like alcoholism, uh, environmental changes, uh, psychological conditions, um, depression, those types of things. And so if you are interested in certain aspects, like different hobbies and things, by being a storyboard writer, you can take it another step further. Yeah, you can make a book, but can they actually see and feel and experience the same way that a video game can? So it's creative writing just in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, I I totally agree with that, and I think that that is that's a huge aspect. I mean, a game without a solid story just it either you either get bored of it too early, or you play through it and it just falls flat, and you're just kind of disappointed in it. And I think that's one thing that's really really cool, at least in my eyes, with indie games is you have so many different people that have control. Like a small group can have such so much control of one game that the story that they had in their mind is exactly what comes out in the game. And it feels way more personable and deep as opposed to having a huge group of people make this massive AAA game that you wait forever, which may just be hype, honestly, as the game gets hyped up for so long and then it just pans out flat. Um, and that's that's just one thing that I really love about indie stories is they do feel really personal and, and to the heart. Like, it, it feels genuine. Um, I guess we kind of touched on it a little bit uh, with you mentioning, like, really focus in on your idea. But what other advice would you give new aspiring game developers um, that are just like, they're just scratching the surface. They're just working on their first game. What are some things that, that you would have wanted to hear before you started your first game? I guess for one, I can backtrack to that previous point. Don't let a good story necessarily discourage you because you don't always need to have a story you just need to have a premise and an idea so there's games out there like look at Fortnite. there's not really a story behind it until like you do the season thing but the whole premise is battle royale or if you look at um uh, unturned there wasn't really a necessarily like a story that like you're specifically focusing on like you're going in chapters like the last of us you're playing more for like the multiplayer aspect the survival the crafting the killing the zombies and so don't let that discourage you um but yes a story is a good essential part but if you're not a good story person just go for it third thing it would probably be do your research uh, before just jumping right in, get an idea of like what you want for yourself out of this. Do you want to actually make an entire game or are you more of like, well, I just want to help make a game. Like I'm an artist. I don't want to sit there and make blueprints or code and all this other stuff. I just want to make the character. And so by really like studying yourself as a person you can get into the specific section of game development that you want to be in without having the mixed signals and weird navigation pathway, which is the fun part in my opinion, but for some people that could be discouraging. So do your research. 
Yeah, I think those are all really good points. I mean, you're you're so right about like mechanics and gameplay. If that's not on point, the story may not even come through. So you got to make sure you make a game that is fun and functional. First off, that's important. Um, but like you said, with the community kind of figuring out like where you fit in the development process, um, I want to shout out a buddy of mine, Cheyenne, who turned me on to Itch.io and their forums. I didn't know about the forums. I knew about Itch.io, but the forums, there's tons of people in there that talk and they're pretty much all game devs. So if you're looking for someone for like a little bit of advice or maybe to work on a project with someone, you might be able to find somebody on there and they do game jams all the time. So you could jump in and just make a game real quick over the course of a week or two and see what you can make. Um, great place to start. Obviously, great advice from you, Travis. Thank you. Um, and I guess just to wrap everything up, go ahead and shout out your social media so that people can find you. <laughs> All right. So definitely check me out on TikTok at the Indie Dev and then my YouTube channel as well, which is by the same name. I cover a lot of tutorials, in depth advice, uh, suggestions, free resources, anything you can possibly imagine game development, it's going to be there. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you again for coming on. I appreciate you chatting about Indie Dev, um, just hearing from someone who's working on multiple games from a different area than I usually talk about, which is generally like the retro pixel art kind of vibe games. Um, thank you again. And if you're still watching, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate everybody that comes to the channel, checks us out, ride the wave with us so that we can keep growing. Merch will be coming out soon. Still working mm -hmm. on that. Haven't hit it perfect. There's a couple of things I need to work out, but um, I guess until next time, peace. All right. Thank you for having me.